Welcome back. You're watching Cross Thoughts with Nathan Shan. We're talking about youth leadership programs and various ways to diversify the ways in which we strengthen leadership and self-esteem among young people. We have a new guest uh, arriving for this segment, Della Mundaraja. Della is a facilitator with the youth leadership program as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're going to be talking a bit about uh, another dimension of growth mm -hmm. for your program. Uh, right. Why Roots? Yes. Uh, talking about heritage, history, uh, Tamil-related uh, things into the uh, into the leadership program, right? Exactly. So we, maybe start with why is uh, why is this important for leadership? Why is this particular component important for our young leaders? Right. So uh, as Tamil Canadians, you know, we all came to this country as an immigrant uh, many many years ago, and most of our children are born here. Uh, Actually, all of my, my children are born here. So they are not really exposed to the Tamil culture, the Tamil literature, the, the lot of the messages that come from our ancient literature, like Silapadi Garam, Tirukkural, and so on. Uh, so we, and, and it's also, it's very hard to expect them to learn these things in Tamil. Mm -hmm. Although there are Tamil classes available, they can go and take these classes. But again, from an educational perspective, uh, for them to learn ancient literature and ancient culture, uh, we want to make it more of a, an easy process, more of an activity-based learning. Mm -hmm. So we came up with a concept called Why Roots. Mm -hmm. uh, it's to identify their roots. Mm -hmm. At the same time, learn the good messages that is coming from the literature, the history, including Bharati R. Padalkal, yeah. uh, and also learn about that, uh, the Tamil's uh, literature contribution in, in our society, mm -hmm. whether it's a, whether it's a older version of the society or the modern society of, of new way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Uh, so through this activity-based learning, they will they will learn about uh, our history, our literature. At the same time, they'll what they are going to do, the benefit that's going to come out of this, how they can apply these these learning in the Western lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I think that is the benefit they are going to achieve after going through the program. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges uh, we deal with uh, in youth development is around self-esteem, right? Mm -hmm. And many other times, you know, immigrant communities, there is a bit of a hyphenated identity, and then sometimes there's a bit of a confusion around identity and so on, which is fair, which is actually a natural process. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. How do you see this program kind of helping people's self-value or self-esteem uh, be further developed? Well, I think um, in a broader sense, having a good understanding of anything can really make a person feel confident. So knowing about you know your heritage and your culture then makes you a really good global citizen as well because then when you're communicating with people from different cultures, different backgrounds, you can then really advocate for your culture which then automatically earns the respect of that person that you're mm -hmm. speaking to as well. So I think in the long run it's really good for mm -hmm. someone's self-confidence. And many of our young people, and not many, all of our young people who grow up here are coming through a Eurocentric mm -hmm. curriculum, right? Exactly, whether, yeah. Whether we like it or not, that's what it's being taught, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, they grow up thinking uh, a glorified Europe and a kind of a impoverished South, right? Yes, uh, exactly. A needy South, a mm -hmm. charity needed South or a mm -hmm. global South, right? And and that affects how they perceive their parents, their heritage, and stuff like right? So exactly. how does this, I ho I'm hoping that this program is also to kind of bust that myth about who we are. Right? Exactly. Like, uh, the one example I can I can talk about is Aviyar Atisuri. Yeah. And Atisuri is a very uh, easy form of learning life, uh, starting from Aram Sayyavirambu, you know, mm -hmm. You have to love other people. Mm -hmm. That means you know you have to you have to control your emotions. So these through very easy verses, they're going to learn about life in an easy way. And then, then as Dela said, they're going to respect back the culture and the literature because it is teaching them something you know that is something really valuable for them to lead their life. Yeah. And you know, many a times culture has been used as a police in our households in many ways, mm -hmm. right? Uh, right? So many young people on one side in, in, in schools, I talked about Eurocentrism right. at home, right. it's like you can't do this because our culture doesn't allow it. You can't do this. Right. So almost a disciplining tool, mm -hmm. uh, right. in fact, in, in many ways has right. done injustice to what our culture really is, right? Yeah. So right. it's also a hard work now to kind mm -hmm. of break that through for young people to understand our culture had, you know, lifestyles that are very compatible, right. uh, you know, had many other contributions, right? So mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that's going to be a challenge or in some ways? Uh? So I think that's why this uh, part of YLP is so important is because then we learn almost the science behind stuff too, right? So then when our mothers say, oh, you know, for example, don't cut your nails after 9 p.m. or something on a Friday, 
and you're like why and they don't really tell you why so by learning you know about the the culture um, or the history then we know some of the the reasonings behind it that we then have a firmer understanding that we can then pass along and you know kind of nip that in the bud uh, where it's just being said you know don't do it yeah. there's more of an explanation and our younger generation grow up wanting to have reasons mm -hmm. than right. trying to just to be the thing right so okay. um, what do you perceive as challenge going forward because I'm sure every project you start you have a assessment of risk and, and yes. other things and so on right. right so what are some of the challenges you foresee yeah so so initially uh, the challenge that we thought we are going to have is to uh, same as the the youth leadership program challenge we had to explain the concept to parents so most if you look at the the, the student population they are from 10 to 18 year old mm -hmm. and 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 the 10 to 15 year old the parent themselves are young parents you know they are in their mid 30s to early 40s right to and they have also come to this country you know when they were young so even them you know they may not have had the same exposure that mm -hmm. I I've had you know back home right mm -hmm. but uh, luckily or, or by by program uh, we announced the program about a week ago within few hours we got sold out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the program is the although it's a pilot program mm -hmm. we are completely sold out we don't have any more spots that means p that that shows that the value is already that the need is already there and when we when we uh, announced the program people just went and grabbed it mm -hmm. yeah and I think there's a greater uh, like the, there are a couple of generations that have missed opportunities right? right one generation missed it because they had to go country to country to escape war to mm -hmm. get settled right the other generation has to kind of traveling with their parents and, right. and having getting used to different cultures and countries and so on, right? Yeah. And so as our children grow, we are trying to see a more of a stable life and then starting to think about this, right? right? And many of us, when we went to universities, is when we started exploring our identity because we yeah. missed it in school, right? right. So how do you think, uh, one of the difficulties is that we have a lot of places that teach Tamil language, a lot of places there is this thing happening, right? Mm -hmm. But the connectivity or the kind of a curriculum or the pedagogy that's used to kind of reach young people is not sometimes effective and that's mm -hmm. why we lose. Mm -hmm. So is there attention being paid to make this uh, kind of a, you know, the parents might like it because they want their children to be tied into cultural, uh, you know, atmospheres. Mm -hmm. But how do we make this fun and learnable for young people? I think one of the best ways of learning and retaining knowledge is through storytelling. And I think that that may be a component of how they're learning it. Um, and also having a forum for discussion and learning from each other is really important too. And we'll definitely make the space for that. What age group uh, is it, it It applies to uh, 10 to 18. And so we, we've also engaging young adults. Uh, so we have uh, enrollees uh, within the age group of 18 to 30 as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and the best part of that, to again, to answer your question, is that the, the, it's taught in English. Mm -hmm. And we don't expect students to memorize 130, 1,330 verses of Thirukkura. Mm -hmm. That's not a requirement. Mm -hmm. it, it's, to, it's to explain the principles or the guiding principles behind this literature and the history mm -hmm. and expect them to take the value and apply that in their own life. And it's, yeah. it's good because if, if, if somebody is driven through curiosity, they will start right. learning language. Exactly. Later. If they're not driven through curiosity and that willingness, right. then how much ever, you know, I, I know students who went to Tamil school for 10, 12 years and still yeah. won't be able to <laughs> <laughs> speak right. much right? because right. The, that, that connection wasn't there. So talking about choice, you know, because obviously if you put a consultation out to our community, they would say you should include this, you should include that. You yes. should, yeah. Everybody has their favorite right. for curriculum, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. How did you pick or how have you picked or how do you pick? Yes, so we, uh, it's a good question. Uh, we engage uh, Tamil scholars who are living in, in the greater Toronto area and we went through a brainstorming session. Uh, so the, these are very experienced uh, Tamil scholars, you know, they are writers, they are educators. Uh, and then our, our organization, we had we had a brainstorming sessions. We we sort of you know talked about many different topics. Then then we focused on what is really applicable to a younger generation. What can be thought through like storytelling or activity based learning so that they can end of the program they can take some value back to their to their home because you can't teach everything in a in a in a in a, in a, in a session or a workshop. So you, there has to be. Uh, something that is precise that can provide you know provide value so you know yes the choice was hard there were a lot of choices that we can do yeah. uh, in, 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 in through a program like this but we have to pick uh, certain topics so that's why we picked uh, uh, Tamil literature mm -hmm. uh, Tamil history the contribution of Tamil uh, writers to the Tamil community including the modern writing format mm -hmm. and also about uh, talk about uh, uh, 
topics like uh, Aati Sudi and, mm -hmm. and Thirukural and things like that. Yeah. And it's great, like philosophy is being incorporated into mm -hmm. this. Uh, you yeah. know, our contribution to world philosophy is mm -hmm. is amazing. Uh, one of the challenges, again, from from younger people growing up, uh, when they start thinking about Tamil culture, mm -hmm. bec because of the exposure they've had, they think of only arts and language, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they tend to think that's only the contribution that we've been making, right? Mm -hmm. So is there going to be space in this that kind of shows young people that Tamils have been contributing in science? And you talked about literature and like, mm -hmm. just to give a, that you know architecture you know how mm -hmm. cities and civilizations were run right and right. city infrastructure right. for example many many years ago uh, were very advanced in the Tamil right so right. it's part of history but also not just to talk about things that we already know that we glorify a bit right but the mm -hmm. other sides of it right yeah mm -hmm. um, is there, is there a yeah so so the pilot program is going to focus more on uh, guiding principles that is coming from our literature and mm -hmm. and, and the history of Tamils and the culture and so on. I think over the next next set of programs, we can also introduce uh, the contribution of science, arts, and other other forms of uh, contribution from our Tamil community to to the younger younger generation as well. Yeah. Would there but, be a gender analysis on on how this leadership roots is developed? Do you know if if there's going to be a bit of a focus on that or, or <laughs> uh, not not I currently. Mean, like like yeah. I said, this is it's a, the Y roots is, is a pilot program, so okay. it's, it's open to a, a small number of uh, okay. population okay. i think over the over the next uh, offering starting from fall of 2015 you know we can look at to see yeah. you know how how else we can diversify the program and make it more inclusive yeah and even even picking literature contributors mm -hmm. you could pick you know you talked about Aubier. i think Aubier, in, exactly in, inherently yeah. there are things examples yeah. you could pick right. uh, that are not necessarily you know all male and so on right so mm -hmm. we're coming closer to the end of the show mm -hmm. um, the last questions to both of you is around uh, um, this is a pilot project. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to get out of it? I think one, obviously, you know, success so that you can build further. Right. But are there going to be models developed and things like that? So, and then, you know, we'll wrap up with that. Right. So, so the pilot project, as in any pilot project, we want to measure the response from our, from the from our audience and 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 measure the success so that we can improve the program when we offer this uh, in in the fall of 2015 or, or the winter of 2016. Uh, so we have a we have great response. Like I said, you know, it was sold out within few hours. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a great number of a diverse uh, population of students. They are going to be attending, including some young adults within the age group of twenty between eighteen to thirty. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we'll have good representation. Um, we're expecting a lot of input from them, mm -hmm. and uh, so hopefully we can you know improve the program and uh, bring great value to the community. Mm -hmm. You want to add something? What I really hope for is that, like right now, if I ask you to Google a quote, you may look for Confucius or Mark mm -hmm. Twain or Lincoln. I hope that one day someone Googles Bardiar. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So to have enough exposure and for our young generation to spread the word mm -hmm. and share it so that eventually it's globally known that you know there are amazing mm -hmm. literature and words said by Tamils. Great. <laughs> Best wishes. I, I know it's a very much needed niche of support that mm -hmm. our community, just like the leadership uh, thing. This part has been something that's been uh, bothering many of us as young parents right. who have, you know, children under the age of five. Right. We would like them to have opportunities where it's not always a pressure about, you know, culture in a very traditional sense, how they learn it in a, in a very diversified environment, uh, by facilitated mm -hmm. discussion, by storytelling. So uh, a lot of uh, potential for this. So good luck. And uh, thank you very much, Kumar and Dilla, for coming to the show and sharing these insights. And uh, We'll definitely, you know, maybe after a few months, uh, we'll come back and uh, reflect on the success of the project. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for you. the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So viewers, we talked about uh, youth leadership today. We talked about uh, youth leadership programs in general, uh, particularly uh, the Center for uh, Youth Leadership and Innovation. Center for, uh, Center for Leadership and Innovation. And, uh, and their programs, and particularly using documentary as well as uh, roots and heritage related uh, initiatives to advance leadership. So thank you for watching Crossroads. Please send your feedback to crossroads at tamilvision.tv. We'll see you next week with another topic. Take care.